Hello yet again, Honors American History 1 students. Same thing I'm going to do with this assignment that I did with the other um, assignment, like the one we read on Levi Coffin, that was just a page and had uh, long and had three questions. I'm going to read this about Harriet Tubman. How in the world can we possibly study the Underground Railroad without talking about Harriet Tubman? So this one is kind of like a biography. It's called American Lives, Harriet Tubman, Conductor to Freedom. Accepting John Brown, I know of no one who has willingly encountered more perils and hardships to serve our enslaved people than you have. And that's a letter from Frederick Douglass to Harriet Tubman in 1868. So let's read it together. Herself an escaped slave, Harriet Tubman risked her life countless times by returning to the South to free others from slavery. So she wasn't just an escaped slave, she actually went and got others as well. I'm going to stop commenting, I'll just read it. She became known as the Moses of her people because she led so many from captivity to the promise of the North. Harriet Tubman, circa 1820 to 1913, was born around 1820 on the eastern shore of Maryland. When she was six, her master hired her out to another family to work. She was uncooperative, though, and was sent back. Another failed effort to hire her out, she was made a field hand. When only 13, she blocked an overseer from pursuing an escaping slave. He hurled a two-pound weight that hit Tubman, fracturing her skull. Until the end of her life, she suffered occasional blackouts as a result of the blow. She recovered from the incident and later joined her father in being hired out to a builder. She worked hard performing heavy labor that normally was done by men. She preferred such work to being in the kitchen or doing cleaning. She became strong and tough. She married John Tubman during this period. When the plantation owner died, the slaves were sold because the estate was struggling. One day in 1849, Tubman was told that she and her brothers had been sold. Determined not to be sent further south, she escaped that night. Aided by the Underground Railroad, Tubman made it to Philadelphia and began to work in hotels, visiting the Philadelphia Vigilance Committee, which helped runaways. She learned that her brother-in-law was planning to come north with his, with his wife, her sister, and their child. Tubman returned south to lead them both to freedom. The next year, she brought out a brother and his family. Later, she returned for her husband, but he had remarried and chose not to leave. Tubman led out 11 others instead. Throughout the 1850s, Tubman returned to the South almost 20 times. She let slaves know that she was uh, nearby with the simple secret message, Moses is here. She brought anywhere from 60 to 300 slaves to the North, among them her parents. She became notorious throughout the South where the reward for her capture went as high as $40,000. And you can look up the exchange rate if you'd like on that. That's a lot of money. In the North, Tubman became friends with the leading abolitionists, including Wendell Phillips and Frederick Douglass. She was visited by John Brown. He had a plan to free large numbers of slaves and hoped to take advantage of Tubman's detailed knowledge of geography and conditions in the South. At about this time, she also began to make public appearances, describing the evils of slavery and telling the stories of her rescue voyages. Tubman was saddened by the collapse of John Brown's plan, which we'll study this week as well. When the Civil War broke out, she took direct action by helping the Union Army in South Carolina. She served as a spy and a scout, going behind Confederate lines to gather information from slaves. She also worked as a nurse and helped African Americans who escaped Confederate control. After the war's end and her husband's death, she remarried. She lived on a farm, sold to her for a small amount by William Seward, prominent New York Republican and Abraham Lincoln Secretary of State, who just also, I know I said I'd stop commenting, bought Alaska, by the way, for us. She devoted herself to helping others. She started the Harriet Tubman Home for Indigent Aged Negroes in, to help older former slaves. She campaigned to establish schools in the South for the now freed African Americans. For many years, Tubman tried to persuade Congress to grant her a pension for her work during the war, and it was finally approved in 1897. So Harriet Tubman's probably, to be perfectly honest, one of my favorite people to study just because of how she's overcome adversity. Um, but here are the questions at the bottom that I'd like for you guys to go to Canvas in a text box, entry and answer those. Number one, why was the route taken by escaping slaves called the Underground Railroad? Number two, why was such a high reward placed on Tubman? 
and number three in the 1850s tubman had a home in st catharines a town in canada near buffalo new york why did she lead escaped slaves there to new york again if you'll answer those questions in a text box entry in canvas this shouldn't take you more than 15 minutes i enjoyed reading this to you and i'll do a couple more readings for you this week and i'll see you on the next assignment